final leg. So we know that the 2020 Olympics scheduled to be in Tokyo this year were unfortunately postponed until 2021. And a lot of other meets that were supposed to be going down this summer have also unfortunately been postponed. But I want to take a look at some of the events that would potentially have had world records go down in this 2020 year. So let's jump into a couple of them. First off, we have the men's 400 meter hurdles. The record was set by Kevin Young from the United States back in 1992. We have three main protagonists who are really contending for that world record. Carson Warholm from Norway with a personal best of 46.92 seconds. Rai Benjamin from the United States. He runs 46.98 seconds. And then we also have Abdurrahman Samba from Qatar. He ran 46.98 seconds. So all three of these guys already under 47 seconds. They're ranked number two and equal number three all time, only behind Kevin Young. All three of them were really going for it in 2019. Of course, at the World Championships, Warholm, Benjamin, and Samba got gold, silver, and bronze, respectively. They're very, very young. So even though 2020 is not happening, 2021 seems like it's very likely that that world record by Kevin Young might be able to go down. So this is definitely one of them that's very likely. Keep a lookout for that men's 400 meter hurdles. Now, still on the men's side, we have to talk about that men's shot put. The world record is set by Randy Barnes from the United States, dating back to 1990 with a best of 23.12 meters. The shot put has been on fire the past couple years. And in 2019, we have three main contenders rising from the group. Joe Kovas from the United States, 22.91 meter best. Ryan Krauser, the Olympic champion, also from the US, best of 22.90 meters. Then from New Zealand, Tom Walsh equals Ryan Krauser's best of 22.90 meters. So all three of them are really on the brink of getting towards that world record. We have Joe Kovas, he's number three all time. And then Krauser and Walsh are number five all time. So they are all very close into that 23 meter range and definitely going to be pushing towards it in the 2021 season. But I think that's one of the records that could have gone down in 2020. Definitely keep a lookout for it in the next year or so. Now, moving back to the hurdles, we got to talk about that women's 400 meter hurdles. World record just set last year by Dalila Muhammad, 52.16 seconds. So of course we know Muhammad set the world record first at the USA Championships running 52.20 seconds last year to beat out Sydney McLaughlin by a very comfortable margin. But then it came to the World Championships in Doha. McLaughlin had stepped things up. She had beat Dalila Muhammad in the midseason, but Muhammad, she managed to come back, grab the gold medal at those World Championships, improve the record to 52.16 seconds, taking four hundredths of a second off her world record. So of course, it's very likely all she has to do is break a PR. She would have been able to possibly do it this year, might be able to do it in 2021. But what makes this so significant is Sydney McLaughlin. McLaughlin is extremely young and in the Doha World Championship final, she managed to run 52.23 seconds to get the silver medal, just three hundredths of a second away from the world record Muhammad set previously, and just seven hundredths of a second away from the world record that stands by the little Muhammad. So Sydney McLaughlin is probably going to be the favorite to potentially break this world record because she is much younger. She has a lot more to improve upon, but do not forget about Delilah Muhammad. She's definitely going to be pushed by Sydney McLaughlin, and both these ladies are a threat to improve the standing world record, potentially getting under that 52 second barrier. So that women's 400 meter hurdles. Sticking on the women's side, but in the women's 3000 meter steeplechase, we have the world record set by Beatrice Chepkowicz back in 2018, eight minutes, 44.32 seconds. Now, Beatrice Chepkowicz is still in her prime. She's been running extremely fast and she's just two years removed from that personal best and world record that she set. So going into the Olympic year, she definitely could have challenged that in the 2020 season. Of course, we're going to see the Olympics in 2021. So Chepkowicz definitely has a chance to improve upon her world record. And if not at the Olympics, then potentially during the season, just like she set this previous world record. So she's going to have some competition. Of course, there's a lot of Kenyans. Of course, Emma Coburn from the United States. I think one lady to look out for is Chess Pole from Kenya. She's very, very young. She's already run under nine minutes in the 3000 meter steeplechase. She hasn't been as consistent the past two or so years, but I think because of her age, she's definitely going to be one to challenge that world record. But for now, I think Beastrich Chepkowicz is definitely the front contender for her own world record. Now, keeping it in the mid distance, I want to talk about that women's 1500 meters. This record was set by Genzebe de Baba back in 2015, three minutes, 50.07 seconds. Now, this is one of the strongest world records on the books. This record dated back all the way into the 90s and Genzebe de Baba really uh, dominated that record. But the main contender is definitely Safana San. After she had an amazing 2019 season that saw her get a gold medal in the 10,000 meters and in the 
1500 meters where she ran a best of 351.95 seconds. That time moved her to number two all time, only behind Gonzibet de Baba, as long as we, you know, take out those questionable Chinese times from back in the 90s. But Tiffana San is definitely going to be challenging for that record. She's very young and she's definitely still on the rise. So 2020 is not happening. Look for 2021 where she may get into a one-off race and push towards that world record. She already set the world record at the one mile race last year. So dropping it down to the 1500 meters and pushing towards that three minute 50 second barrier is definitely in her range. She'll have some competition as well. I'm looking at someone like Faith Kip Yegon from Kenya who just came back from childbirth but managed to run one of the best times in 1500 meter history only behind Stefan Hassan. So definitely keep a look out for that women's 1500 meter record. Moving back over to the field, we got to talk about the men's triple jump. The world record was set by Jonathan Edwards from Great Britain all the way back in 1995 with a best of 18.29 meters. So right now there's three contenders that I see to potentially get this world record. Christian Taylor from the United States is definitely the front runner. He has the second best performance all time in the triple jump. Personal best of 18.21 meters set at the world championships in Beijing in 2015. He's jumped over 18 meters a couple times in his career. He has multiple gold medals, two-time Olympic champion, four-time world champion. So he has the accolades. He's just been very vocal about getting that world record. That's the one thing he wants to get in his career. So definitely keep a lookout for him. But he has challengers. He has Will Clay, his own countryman from the United States. Will Clay has jumped 18.14 meters just last year in 2019, really significantly improving his personal best, moving him up to number three all time. So he's definitely going to be challenging for the world record. Also can't forget about Pedro Pablo Picardo, who competes for Portugal. Remember, he converted from Cuba to Portugal. He's also jumped over 18 meters a couple times, a personal best of 18.08 meters set back in 2015 as well, similar to Christian Taylor. So he's definitely challenging for that world record, not to forget about him. So three guys really challenging for Jonathan Edwards' record, definitely ones to look out for. Now, moving back over to the track, we have the women's 100 meter hurdles. This record was set just back in 2016, four years ago by Kendra Harrison from the United States, 12.20 seconds. Now, this one is a little bit tougher, but I think because we have a lot of young athletes, namely Kendra Harrison, who owns the world record, she just got a silver medal at the world championships last year. Of course, her personal best is that world record. She hasn't been as consistently close to the world record, but if she's able to just improve upon her personal best, get her racing tactics together she's definitely going to be able to challenge to improve that world record she does have a lot of competition though a couple contenders are daniel williams from jamaica she just recently got the bronze medal at the world championships of course had the gold medal from 2015 but a couple times during the 2019 season she improved her personal best ending it with a best of 12.32 seconds huge performance which is just 0.12 seconds off that world record by harrison so she's definitely in contention for that world record we also can't forget about Brianna McNeil from the United States as well. She has a personal best of 12.26 seconds. So just six hundredths of a second away from that world record. It was set back in 2013. She's had an up and down career since then. Of course, she's a defending Olympic champion, but she's definitely in contention for that world record. So this is another one, a little bit outside shot, but definitely keep a lookout for that women's 100 meter hurdles. Now moving over to the relay, we have the men's four by 100 meter relay. This is a little bit outside shot, but the record was set back in 2012 by the Jamaican team of Usain Bolt, Nesta Carter, Michael Freider, and Johan Blake, 36.84 seconds at the London Olympic Games. So this is one of the best records on the books for the sprints on the men's side. The record was very significant. Of course, the Usain Bolt record is going to be very challenging, but the United States does have a kind of outside shot to potentially get that record. There's a strong contingent of guys running right now. Christian Coleman, of course, the fastest man in the world right now. Noah Lyles, he's the fastest man at 200 meters right now. Also, Justin Gatlin, Michael Rogers, 
Rodgers, Ronnie Baker. They have a very strong contingent of guys who are in line to put together a very fast team and challenge that record. Last year, they just ran an American record of 37.10 seconds, which is the second fastest by any country in the world, only behind Jamaica and only behind two of Jamaica's times. So they're definitely in contention. Of course, Coleman and Lyles are very young. Ronnie Baker is also very young and had a very great indoor season. Also, Justin Gatlin, he's still in form. Uh, Michael Rogers is still in form. There's a couple guys that they can also transfer in. So USA, again, outside shot at this record, but they definitely might be in contention. Definitely one to look out for. Finally, ending things off with another very tough record, but the men's 1500 meters set by Hishan El Garouj from Morocco back in 1998, 326 flat in that 1500 meters. I think you can all guess who the main contender is. Timothy Chiriot from Kenya. He has been extremely dominant over the past two years or so. He's of course the world champion in 2019 in Doha. He dominated that world championship race. He has a personal best from 2018 of 328.41 seconds. Makes him number seven all time in the 1500 meters. But because of how consistent he's been over the past two years and specifically in 2019, he's definitely potentially going to push towards that world record. He's still very young. He might have gotten closer in 2020. We're going to see what he does in 2021. He's a clear favorite for that Olympic gold and he might be able to get into that 326 range to potentially get close to that world record. Very outside shot. I might not think it might be able to go down, but there's a lot of strong possibility that I might be able to surprise people and get that world record. So Timothy Chiriot in that men's 1500 meters. Now, before I end, I just want to note one more, the men's pole vault. So of course, Mondo Duplantis, this 2020 indoor season, he already decimated the world indoor record in the pole vault on two occasions, improving the record from 6.17 meters then to 6.18 meters. He took an attempt at 6.19, didn't get it, but dominating the pole vault already. The outdoor world record though is 6.14 meters set by Sergey Bubka all the way back in 1994. So of course, pole vault is one of the events that doesn't differentiate between the indoors and outdoors because of the nature of the event. So even the last three world records set by Mondo Duplantis, Renola Villanine, and Sergey Bubka were all set indoors. But the outdoor record by Sergey Bubka is that 6.14 meters. Mondo Duplantis can probably comfortably get over that record. So definitely one he's very likely going to be able to get in the 2021 season. Another contender though, I think Sam Kendricks is one to look out for. Last year in 2019, he managed to jump 6.06 meters. So he definitely could improve a lot. Remember, Mondo Duplantis had jumped 6.05 meters and then went right up to the world record of 6.17. So definitely keep a lookout for that men's pole vault world record. All right, so those are the world records I potentially would have picked to go down in the 2020 season. We're definitely going to look out for them in the 2021 season. Of course, it's a whole year away. Athletes have to prepare and train for it, but the Olympics are getting shifted to the summer of 2021, and the athletes are going to be looking to be in the form of their lives. So definitely keep a lookout for it. Let me know. Leave a comment below on any records you think might potentially have gone down in 2020 and ones that we should be looking out for in 2021, or if there's any records on the list that you probably think shouldn't and are definitely not going to be broken. Let me know. Leave it in the comments below. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be back again for the next video. Thanks.